Absolutely. So here we have um, an application that uh, is a video application. That's the application we'll be monitoring for troubleshooting. It's a VLC app. It's virtualized over vSphere cluster and streams video oh. information over this network. We use INT to take information about this application. So we generate reports to monitor that application along the physical network. And then we introduce, at some point, a disturbance in this network. We have a traffic generator. So we'll go and uh, impact that application, causing network congestions and packet drop. So that application will be disrupted. So we'll use I deep inside an INT to monitor that application and see how that goes. This first uh, dashboard shows it's a dashboard for, uh, for deep inside. You have a number of things. You have in red what we call anomalies, and in blue what we call events. Anomalies are generally bad for your network because they are going to cause packet drops and congestions. And then uh, we have a number of navigational pointers, so you can jump from page to page. We have dashboards, we have flow tables, we have anomaly dashboards, and topology views. In this dashboard, we have sorted the flows by the one with highest latency. So when we have no problems in this network, you can see that clearly all the latency is pretty nominal. I can read some of the numbers here, but the latency is within the 600, 700 nanoseconds. The technology leverages hardware timestamping, so it's very accurate. So we can give you transit latency accurate to the nanosecond here. And then we also have from INT that path information that tells you, you know, you've been through these switches. We also have an anomaly dashboard, so which looks pretty boring right now. I don't have much happening because I don't have any problem. Let's now introduce that congestion event and that, you know, aggressor flow that will disrupt the application. So on the black window here, we'll start the congestion flow. And as soon as the congestion happens, you can see that deep inside, thanks to INT reporting things, is detecting packet drops. So you have kind of the user view where things are pixelated and you have like the deep inside view. How we go and troubleshoot this? We go back to the deep inside console and we look at the topology and we can look at the nodes, in this case, are lighted in red. This is one of the spine switch that is being congested by that information there. So you can click on that switch and get information about, on a per port base, get latency profile on, uh, or from deep inside. You can find out that this is actually, if you look at this, it's almost uh, 15 milliseconds. There is a big congestion happening on this port. And this is the port 32.0, where these two flows, video flows and the uh, aggressor flow are colliding. So in few clicks, I was able to spot where the problem is find out where on which port this is happening, even get information about the queue where this is happening. So let's move this on and let's look at more things. So again, my application is really bad here. So let's go and click on one of these anomalies. And this is like giving me kind of the information about when there was a congestion let me look at, you remember that you know, analogy of like recording a video uh, and find out which application was impacted. So here on the bottom in red, you have packet drops and here you have congestion events. And, uh, and this is like the volume of these flows in the queue. So you can go and see, first of all, which packet was impacted and second, which flows were creating that uh, congestion. TCP flows are belonging to the aggressor flow the aggressive application. So I can read if I mouse over the different flows, the fire tuple and the protocol, and find out also which application are impacted. So it doesn't matter how small the congestion event is. I can go down to the hundreds of nanoseconds, again, because this is a packet by packet telemetry technology and is built into the switch data plane. And I can go up to like tens of milliseconds. It really depends on how big is the magnitude of that disturbance. So here's a couple questions, and I, I might have missed the earlier answer to this, so if I did, I apologize. But, you know, are you guys doing, first of all, you know, control plane policing, or how are you guys guaranteeing that you can actually still get that data out of a switch that's presumably having trouble on at least one or more ports? So that's the first thing, because you still have to be able to get that data out. If you can't get it out, you're not going to see it. And then secondly, how are you guys actually tracking the path, right? So if you have an entire switch 
just crap the bed. I mean, <laughs> is this switch going to talk about that switch? No, I can't see him anymore. Is that this a valid action? That is a valid <laughs> action. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually the Push Python here. library for that. So to answer the first question, typically control plane policing is used to control the packets that go to the CPU. But in this case, we are not sending any packet to the CPU. These data plane reports are streamed directly from one of the front panel interface, interface as, uh, as data, as packets. CPU is never in the path, so it doesn't become a bottleneck. Yeah, I agree with you. If you put CPU in the loop, it will become a bottleneck. To answer your second question, uh, the switch doesn't know about the other switch, but the analytic engine will know, because the analytic engine receives all this information and can build correlation now that you have a topology view can build information about who is doing what and what's happening in the overall network. Yeah. OK. Do you do any kind of profiling? So say I don't really know what I'm looking at. I don't really just the user said things are bad. And does it do any not an attempt to tell you that? It, isn't yeah. that how you ever get from your users? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> the internet's broke. Right. right. <laughs> so uh, one of the things that we want to implement as roadmap is machine learning. And one of the use cases for machine learning on top of all this, like, streaming engine is to exactly find the baselines. Because most of the time, people don't know what thresholds or what things to observe because they don't know what's, what's a baseline type of behavior for their application. So one of the first use cases for machine learning will be exactly to find the baseline uh, for uh, and profiling, as you mentioned. Yes. So let's move on on the, on the demo. So here, again, it's very, again, I can see these pocket drops. Let's now see how I can implement a feedback loop and correct this problem. So for the feedback loop, I'm going to use a controller. As a disclaimer, we don't build controllers. So this will be a third party controller. It could be you know, an SDN controller from, uh, from a vendor that does this. Um, and uh, we just implemented a very simplified controller, which is Python based. We'll get that information about from INT and see how we can react to that. One of the things I want to highlight is we also built the Slack um, uh, app so to report information about the anomalies in real time. And so this is just a demonstration of that push uh, or streaming telemetry API works. We, we were able to write very easily a Slack plugin to for a, fundamentally for a network operator to get this information without being sitting in front of the dashboard. So we, get, we see network anomalies here. On the Slack dashboard, we see the deep inside dashboard. So now we enable the closed loop. And the first thing we do is we get the list of flows that are impacted. We get the path information from INT. We determine the alternate paths. If ECMP is configured in this network, if there are alternate paths, we can read out affected application or, or mission critical application to alternate paths. So that con the controller will do that. And uh, as you can see, this is happening right now on the controller. And as this happened, INT will now detect a path change and generate a report. And that report is again pushed to DI and is published through Slack. So you can see not only uh, the detection of the problem here, but you can see also the effect after the change happens. And here you go. Basically, now the problem is gone. The video quality is restored, right? So this was. Basically, an example of automating that closed loop, loop solution to fix and self-fill the network. So if you go back now to things like you know, looking at latency, we can quickly see what happens to the latency. And this, in like a few seconds, will bring me back to that flow. We can go and click on the UDP flow, that is that video stream. And we can see that the latency is back to normal. So you know, from like you know, 10 milliseconds because of congestions, I now have a nominal latency. And here I can see the paths before and after the path change. So I was going through the switch. Now I'm going through the switch. Just my observation window, you know, kind of uh, covers both the before and after. That's why I see both the paths here. One last thing in the demo <clears throat> is to somebody may ask how fast this is. You know, I'm just. I basically showed the before just for troubleshooting the problem. But what if I have this always enable and uh, I want to see how fast uh, this is? So I can enable the loop before the problem occurs and then trigger the problem. So here we go. We trigger the problem. Problem is detected. 
the changes are published all in sub-second. And uh, if I go back here, you can clearly see that the amount of packet loss is really minimal. So if I click on that red dot, I'll see also the packet drops. I had about 12 packet drops during that time, even which in the network like this is most nothing. And this is an example of like, you know, how this closed loop solution can work automating fixes. And so we are getting there. People have been talking about closed loop solution, but we truly think you know, this is the, the way to go. Getting the right level of visibility helps you with that. So you've got me really curious now, because I've spent about almost a decade in IP broadcast video doing IPTV and broadcasting, you know, you know, ESPN and all the channels yes. down to the last mile. And it took us a whole lot longer to troubleshoot pixelization when we would encounter it than you just did. Are, are carriers starting to use that technology for triple play type networks? Is that, is that why the, the demo was based on that or just because it's easy to visualize packet loss? So, uh, you know, uh, we picked that video application because it's an easy one to, to implement as a demo. You, yeah. you probably recognize that video stream is a very popular one. But yes, we also have a video broadcaster that implemented some of these monitoring techniques and uh, they see the value in this. I could definitely uh, In general, see that. there are other use cases for these vendors, like, for example, how you optimize multicast replications sure. and, and video replication, but this is one that they're It's an interested. incredibly hard application to troubleshoot. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. It's like, I can think of lots of clients that would love that. But... Yes. Yeah. So last thing is like all the APIs, all the things, beautiful things you have seen are coming from the APIs. The API documentation is in line on deep inside. We have online documentation so people can see the API and build this automation. So you don't need to just go and ask for a PDF. It's all available through the deep inside UI. And that's basically the last thing uh, in my demo.